أحمد هو أصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والله غفور الرحيم Today I want to talk about uh, because it's an Eid so I want to give a basic Eid message uh, to people that uh, listen to me from time to time so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you but what I wanted to share with you is that this is a time to forgive. Okay? If you can't learn to forgive, and if you don't realize that when you forgive people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compensates more than you can imagine. There's a narration, even though the narration has weakness in it, but the point is correct. And that is that, you know, there will be two people on the Day of Judgment, two friends and one friend has done wrong to the other friend and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the friend who was wronged that do you forgive him and he will say no I want my rights and as he's talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's telling Allah a whole list of things he did to him to hurt him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show him a piece of the Jannah and all of, his, all of a sudden his attention will move from the complaint list that he had to the Jannah he will be seeing. And he'll be like, but what's that? What's that? What's that? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, that is for you if you forgive him. And so all the people that backstabbed you, all the people that hurt you, the minimum requirement a person has to have to be in a successful jama'ah, is that you have to be able to forgive because people will hurt you terribly. People will hurt you ter. It's a brotherhood, but that brotherhood, you know, with every rose there's a thorn. And that brotherhood will come with, sometimes your feelings will be hurt. Sometimes you'll feel like, he promised me and he didn't do it. Sometimes you'll be like, I should have been the emir of that thing, but I wasn't. Your feelings will be hurt. If you can't let go of your hurt feelings for the sake of Allah, and for the sake of the unity, for the sake of the jama'ah, well, the same thing in your individual life. Because the family, the jama'ah Allah gave you is the family. Your blood relationships, your mom, your dad, your spouse, your sisters, your brothers and sisters, your family, and, and then you have your friends. If you they have hurt you, forgive them for the sake of Allah because you're going to need the power of forgiveness and the ability to forgive if you want to survive in the future. Okay, If you're going to be in the army of, uh, let's say, the Mahdi, okay, you think he's going to be uh, singing lullabies to you? Or is he going to, he doesn't have time to say things nicely, okay? He's going to say things blunt and people are going to be feeling hurt. You know, he's a commander in chief of an army. He doesn't have time, you know. He, so, you know, of course, uh, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, his situation is completely different. No human being can do what he did, you know. But uh, because his niceness, there's no ni no one nicer <laughs> than him ever. And so what he did was completely amazing. But the reality is that we hurt each other in a jama'ah. And if you don't get over it, if you, don't, if you can't forgive for the sake of Allah, you know, there's a say hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, أَيْنَ يَتَحَابُونَ لِجَلَالِ Where are those people that loved each other for my, my glory? When you're in a jama'ah, you're not in it for yourself. You're not in it for... You're in the jama'ah. Yadullahi fawqa al jama'ah. Allah's hand is over the jama'ah. You're in the jama'ah for the glory of Allah, for the work of Allah. Right? And so you have to... The amir might be... Sometimes you have an amir who's very nice. Sometimes you have an amir who's very strict. Well, you have to deal with it. You have to learn to forgive. You have to learn to forgive. So find someone this Eid that you haven't reached out to find your think of your worst relationship and try to make it better okay if you can't make it better do dua for them do something do dua for them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know soften their hearts and guide them and so on and so forth because and the other thing I wanted to share with you 
is that it's very important that this Eid, when you'll be meeting with people, talk to them, try to see, try to make a jama'ah around you of five people, start sitting down, start going through my juz 1 through 16 that I already have of the Qur'an in explanation. That's a good start. Uh, you can also then start reading Qur'an according to the moon, uh, reading Qur'an uh, together every once in a while, right? Find five, six people, start planning your hijrah, start talking about your hijrah. Some groups have already been made. You can join the Telegram group and ask about where you are and connect with other people in order to find people that are like-minded, that want to get ready for this hijrah. Because my next talk that I'm uploading uh, is going to be about the fall of the nation states, the fall of the nation states. You know, in the in the pagan times, the ritual that the pagans had was of human sacrifice. And so, one of the things that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wanted to show when Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, because he was from a pagan society, and so when he saw in his dream that he is uh, doing zabiha to his son, that was his understanding of the ultimate sacrifice, so to say, and so. This was not revelation to Ibrahim How do we know this? Because if it was revelation, he wouldn't have asked his son, Mada tara? Oh my son, what do you think I should do? Because a prophet doesn't need to ask that if revelation comes. He doesn't need to even question it. He will just tell his son, Allah has commanded this. But he had a dream. And he interpreted, he did his ijtihad as a Nabi on that dream. And Ismail did ijtihad on his father's dream. Because Prophet Ibrahim asked him, Mada tara? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly says in the Quran, do not kill your children. So the Quran is not going to contradict itself. The Quran says in many places, uh, Don't kill your children out of fear of poverty. So why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give a command that is against his command? No, that's not what happened. Uh, what happened is that Ibrahim saw a dream in which he was doing zabiha to his son and he did an ijtihad. It was not a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in that, uh, he tried his best to fulfill that dream. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he then took down his son, then Allah said, قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ رُؤْيَكَ You have been true in your dream. You have been true to your dream, okay? Meaning, you saw yourself about to do zabiha to your son. That's what he was about to do. That's what he saw. Because the dream is always of the future. He was seeing himself doing something that was an ijtihad of his. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, No, this is not what we do. Okay, what we you do is you sacrifice a ram. You sacrifice a, uh, a, a you know, uh, a ram, okay, uh, and so uh, the ram was there instead of the uh, instead of the uh, the Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, okay, and see it's the pagan people that sacrifice human beings. We don't sacrifice human beings, and so Allah subhanahu wa taala tells us the sacrifice we make, and the sacrifice Allah subhanahu wa taala wants us to make is the sacrifice of something that's going to be beneficial to other people. Okay? That something, there's a reason the jamarat, the shayateen, when you're hitting the shayateen, and the hitting of the shayateen and the zabiha of Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. Because that zabiha, that zabiha, right? The zabiha of human beings is satanic. Okay? So why would shaytan come in the middle to stop him from doing something that would be potentially satanic. It's my, the shaitan came there because he knew that who Ibrahim was and what possibly could happen as a result. Because from Ibrahim then, the whole guidance of humanity through you know, Ishaq and then all the prophets all the families, all the religious families, all, you know, from Musa, Dawud, and Suleiman, and all those, Yusuf, and all those, all the way till Isa, and on one side, and then finally, Nabi Muhammad, 
sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the other side because he left his place where his parents were to a place a new place so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring about a new community a new ummah and this is why allah said inni ja'iluka lin nasi imam i'm going to make you an imam of the human beings so shaitan came to stop him from this act not because he was going to sacrifice his son but because shaitan knew that this will lead to something very very significant and very very special because of course shaitan has been around for you know a millennia or more than you know and and he knows uh how things work in the divine order of things okay and he knew uh what this dream will mean and so uh so now ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam so first point is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never say to someone kill your son because this is against the laws of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala second of all allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Ibrahim and the Ummah of Muhammad, we don't do this type of devilish, satanic uh, human sacrifices. What we do is we sacrifice something that is beneficial. You take the meat and share the meat and you share. And what Allah reaches Allah is not the luhum, not the meat, as Quran says. What reaches Allah is your taqwa, right? How much God-fearingness you had, how much you were willing to share, how much you were wanting to share with your friends and with your neighbors and being good. Right, and we are a people like Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, and like Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. We're willing to cut ourselves for the good of humanity. We're willing to cut ourselves and to put ourselves down for the good of humanity. That is the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, and it was because of that attitude of his of complete surrender. You know. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Right? When Allah told Ibrahim, you surrender, he said, okay, I completely surrender. Completely surrender. Completely surrender. Completely, completely in a state of surrendering. Completely in a state of surrendering. That is Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. You know, and, and for that, to surrender to Allah, he was willing to even give his child. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Ibrahim, as well as the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and others, that the sacrifice that goes to Allah is not of human beings, but the sacrifice that goes to Allah subhanahu wa taala is of a kabash, of in a ram, okay, or a sheep or a goat, something that's beneficial to other people, and that is the difference between a satanic religion and Islam, and so. It's wrong to think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted Ibrahim to sacrifice his son. That was never the will of Allah and it didn't happen because it was not the will of Allah. But the point here is, is that we are not satanic. We are a people who forgive. We are a people who surrender. We are a people who show mercy. And this is, inshallah, my message for you this Eid, that join my telegram program and find like-minded people in your area, start having halaqas with them, and soon I will develop a curriculum for people that have different jamaahs in different places, a curriculum for them that they can go through, and to make hijrah plans, and all of that, inshallah ta'ala, if Allah allows me to do that, inshallah. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.